Uh, I'm Dan Xiaxi of uh, the National Research Council of Canada and uh, the, one of the work that we are doing is using silicon photonics for biological sensing. Biosensors is really any type of device that can give a measurable signal uh, when the target molecule uh, binds to uh, another biomolecule on the sensor surface. The sensor that we use is uh, called evanescent field sensor. So basically the molecule binds to the surface and there is an evanescent field of the light on the surface and it's that interaction that gives rise to the sensing signal. Uh, this type of sensor has been around for a very long time but uh, in the past, people have used low index contrast waveguides, uh, for example, optical fiber. Uh, what we have uh, been using is silicon as the waveguide. And silicon has a very high refractive index. And that allows us to make one is very small waveguides. Uh, these waveguides are actually on the order of uh, about a quarter of a micron, or 250 nanometers. And that one is that gives rise to very high evanescent field on the surface. So that gives a very high uh, response and very high sensitivity of the sensor. But another is that this high index contrast allow you to bend the very waveguides very tightly with a radius of a few micron. So we can make sensors that actually uh, has very long interaction lengths to give uh, rise to high response, but still very small on the order of uh, a few tens of micron. These uh, nanophotonic waveguides um, can guide light very tightly because of the high refracting index, uh, index of silicon. So you can uh, wrap around the waveguides in a very small area. And uh, then you can also make large arrays. Uh, another advantage of the silicon photonics is that they can be made with similar technologies as we make uh, microelectronics chips with large area processing. So you can actually make them on an 8 inch wafer in an existing CMOS foundry and get thousands of sensors on the same, same chip. The sensors themselves is only a part or even a small part of it. You need a, a system to actually read out the sensing signal and process them. Uh, so another advantage of uh, using silicon photonics and being able to make large array is that then you can actually use these sensors for different functions, not only to detect different types of molecules, but you can also use some sensors as reference uh, to, for example, monitor the temperature change and monitor the fluidic index change and then uh, differentiate that from the surface target molecule induced sensing signal. So that allows you to uh, make much more simplified instrument and low cost instrument and ultimately portable instrument. And that is uh, something that we have uh, focused on at uh, NRC. Um, the system we have produced can be used to change chips very quickly and monitor 128 sensors at the same time. And at the same time, it doesn't require any type of uh, temperature stabilization or mechanical stabilization. So the system is uh, much more reliable and user-friendly. With different probes, you can capture all sorts of uh, biomolecules. Uh, for example, you can uh, basically do a genome identification if you uh, attach single strand DNA on the surface, or you can attach antibodies on the surface, then you can identify different kind of antigens in the liquid. So one work that we've been uh, concentrating on is what's called serotyping of bacteria, of pathogens. Um, there are many kinds of bacteria, and for example, E. coli is uh, one of the main contaminant in food, but there are many different strains of E. coli and only a handful of them are actually harmful to the human body. And uh, the, the work we've been doing is to 
develop a method to quickly and uh, reliably identify the strain of E. coli. The issue we're ad addressing now is uh, one is the sensitivity and uh, one is uh, the, the time to result. So uh, uh, now the most reliable and common method of identifying pathogen is uh, through culturing and um, that takes a very long time. So it can take uh, seven to 10 days to get a definite result. And very often you can't wait for that long, right? And uh, one ex reason is that it's not very sensitive. So by uh, improving the sensitivity, we can reduce the time uh, to get detectable level of bacteria. And we are also looking at different ways of uh, pre-concentrating the target molecules uh, that yet again reduce the, the detection time. Uh, as I said, uh, food and water safety is the, the area that we are focusing on. But this can be used for uh, um, detecting other types of, of uh, diseases. For example, you can select particular biomarkers that is uh, indicative of um, uh, a heart failure, for example, uh, or a stroke, and uh, many different types of cancer.